Josh Johnson Show. I'm Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, fellow stamp comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, man. How are you? I'm good. Uh, the bird is back, and it's it's just going to do this now. Every time I take that train, the bird is there. The same pigeon from the last episode? So here's the thing. I feel yeah. like it would be crazy for me to just say unequivocally that this is the same pigeon. I don't know that. All I right. know is that it's more fun. It it does look the same, and it exhibits the same <laughs> behavior. And I record it each time, like <laughs> it's the same one. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I feel like I feel like I'm slowly becoming this bird man because no one else seems to notice or care. And I'm like, <laughs> guys, this is the. <laughs> Can I tell you? Okay, so yeah, yesterday I was like, guys, this is the same pigeon from yesterday. And then the person that I was talking to was like, I don't know you. <laughs> you just said it. To I somebody? just said it to somebody. Like, man, this picture. This is the same picture from yesterday. And he was like, yeah, I don't know you or the like. I don't. I don't have any connection <laughs> just, to this. I love that he just started with that. Just, I don't know you. I don't know you. I wasn't there yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fair. It, it wasn't until it wasn't until he um, even said, I don't know you, that I realized I was talking to a stranger. Because you know how sometimes you just take the same commute with like a handful of people? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I get that. Like, Like I had seen him before. Right, And so I thought we could connect. I thought I could both like show my excitement and make a new friend off the fact that this is the same pigeon. Right. And he was like, I don't know you. I don't know you. And I, I was you, like, sir. that's very fair. I know we've taken the train kind of together several times, but right. we have never spoken to each other. Well, because, yeah, because, oops, sorry. And me opening up with this is the same pigeon is not how you start right. a friendship. No, especially then then your follow up is be like, oh, sorry. Well, I I see you taking this route all the time. Also, my and name being, is Josh. <laughs> just that's for a when good you start. Tell the police. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I want you to go ahead and take a good mental picture right now for the description. I'll I'll back up. There you go. Get get a good look. Get a get a good look. I'll turn around real quick so you can give a full description yeah, of what give I'm wearing. The full yeah, everything. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so my my days have been seeing that pigeon again and again. Also going right. to uh, the Met. I went to the Met yesterday. Oh, and that yeah. Was, that was really cool. I But it did remind me that I had been to the Met. I thought I had never been. And then I got to a couple of rooms and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> See, what's great, too, is I know you've been to the Met. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> last year when Jess and I went you and sally talked about when you guys had gone to the Met. yeah so i know you've been there you could have texted me it, but no but i didn't even think okay here's the thing so when i went to the met the first time i was right. just like a kid in a candy store full of art like i was i wasn't i didn't even have a plan <laughs> i was licking everything i was just licking everything i was touching all of it i was asked to leave several <laughs> times had to sneak back in um so basically as i'm walking around the first time I remember much better now, I was just yep. enjoying being there and how big this place is. This is ridiculously huge. And so <laughs> it, it is. It's like every I know. Every time I you turn a thought corner, of you. there's a huge you're in a different huge building. And that is true. And it's it's kind of an easy place to get lost in too. But I just like the idea of you in in the Met, which has one of the like <laughs> best art collections in the country and just you being like this room is so big yeah <laughs> like spinning in a circle no it's it's it was i've never seen a building so big how it's you were just outside amazing and so it's it's an amazing place it wasn't until i got to some of the medieval like byzantine art that i was like wait I've seen like, and it's because they keep the structure the same. So even if the art is right. changing, they like there's that huge gate, you know that that huge huge gate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that I was like, wait, I've seen that exact thing before. And then I turned into a room full yeah. of art I had seen before, and I was like, wait, oh no, I've I've been here. Yeah. And uh, luckily though, the first two hours that I was there, even though I had been there before, I saw a bunch of art I had never seen. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, I mean, it's a massive place. Yeah. They have, and they have so much stuff in there because me and Jess, when we went last year, that was our big thing is that once we, it wasn't until the, because they were closing down. We were there like uh, until like five and we went to their gift shop quick and then we started seeing like the prints and stuff or whatever they have there because usually it's like museums. Here's what we have here and they kind of sell merch based on it. It wasn't until we were going through that we realized like, oh, fuck, they have that here. They have that here. And we didn't get to any of it because we spent like a full hour just in the Egyptian section because they have like old pieces of tombs and pyramids, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. But we realized we got stuck in all that like old historical stuff. I mean, it's all historical, but like that really, really old, like actual structural stuff. We did that for so long, and then one, this time we made a goal. We're like, we are going to get to the paintings. We want it. We didn't see any of the Van Goghs. We missed. It's like the most famous thing they have there, and we missed all of it. We didn't even realize. So this time we went back. We stayed focused, and we got to that stuff. And we were literally like a hallway away from all the shit we wanted to see. That's we just funny. didn't go. We didn't go three extra feet. Yeah. to get to it. I, while I was there, and this is this is what's weird. Clearly, even though a lot of this stuff is priceless, clearly there's a level of care for some pieces more than others because some yeah. pieces have an alarm and some of them do not. And so <laughs> there was a kid who straight up, <laughs> this kid straight up licked the statue of the three graces. <laughs> Just imagine you're sitting there yeah. appreciating, like, you know, ancient art. Like, the, the fact that there's there's someone who has carved into marble mm -hmm. something that has stood the test of time. And you look down, and there's just a third grader just running his tongue. Well, yeah. Remember when we were at the, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and we just saw that kid who was, like, ready to climb into an ancient fountain. Yeah. He was like standing on part of it and just touching it. And his mom's level of alarm was nothing. She just went, Jeffrey, don't. Yeah. And I was like, no, he's 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 climbing history. <laughs> Grab him. Yeah, yeah. His oily, oily fingers are gonna desecrate this this yeah. ancient piece of art. Uh can I talk quick about the other thing I saw at the Philadelphia Museum of Art? Or rather heard. You remember this. I, I when, don't, but yeah. When we were there, I went into this little side room where like it went to like one of those kind of um, like recreation rooms. You know, this is what this, you know, whatever would have looked like. And I, I walk in and there's a security guard in there. Oh, and I yeah. See him off the, he's off to the side with his phone. <laughs> and I just walk into the room and I <laughs> he's doing he's clearly doing speech to text because <laughs> he starts it. And he goes, the dishes, and and then he hears me behind him, and he stops, but then continues, just goes, the dishes better be cleaned and put away when I get home. <laughs> and he was clearly sending a threatening text to a family member. Yeah. But I love the has it, the thinking about not finishing saying it. But then he went ahead because I was in there. I was right behind him. The and only he reason he to finish the threat was because you were there. That's probably the gap was probably yeah yeah. Because when effort. I okay, because then later when <laughs> I when I lost you, I found him. So then you were you were like gone. You were like because every city, every major city's of art museum is yeah. usually just huge. So like the Art Institute yes. in Chicago is huge. Philadelphia yep. Museum of Art, the the uh, Virginia Fine Arts Museum, all like take days to get through. Like, and that's only yeah. if you're trying yeah. to just look, much less read what the artist was yeah. doing when they mm -hmm. made the piece. So I lose you almost immediately. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you were just really enjoying looking at the swords, and I was ready to move on. <laughs> yeah. So I was like chilling looking at swords i was chilling looking at like all, yeah. all this stuff anyway i lose you at one point and there's a room just like the room that you were in this is a different area though i think that, mm -hmm. that you were in then versus the one i was in where they've taken pieces that were essentially like the living quarters of that period and so right yeah, yeah. this guy once again is tucked away 
I guess he just thinks no one looks in this room because you can only take two steps into the room and look around. You can't actually right because then it's just a barrier, and then you're just looking at the the still life, I guess, or whatever. But then he's tucked into the side, and so so then when I I I don't even fully hear what he said. I have like many inferences to what he may have been saying because it sounded like what (laughs) I what I heard him. He had once again speech text phone close to his mouth, and he was like, "Don't make me." Break my foot off. And like, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was it was like the same like through the teeth thing that I imagine you heard, but it oh, was yeah, even absolutely. more was mumbly. So it wasn't like the dishes, whatever. It was like like just one just amoeba of a threat. Just like don't make me <laughs> take the back of your leg. And, like it was just uh. Just Chaos. this poor security guard. He just wants to find a quiet corner to threaten his family. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he wants to do. Yeah. And he was in stark contrast to the first security guard who ran into, member who was telling us about like the ancient railing, which could absolutely be a lie. It could be. I also think this is what I think. I think that that guy was told that by a different security guard years ago. And he's That's repeated it ever since because. It is an interesting fact, and I think it could be true mainly because they are tucked away in a way that people just don't look at them. Yeah, so there's this one room where then there's this just out, there's like an a, like a walkway up there or something looks like a staff only yeah, area yeah and there's this one section of like stone railing and he's like that is I think he said that's that's the oldest piece of or no it's one of the oldest pieces actually in the museum yeah because it was taken over from some sort of i don't know cathedral or something yeah they took it then, from a temple yeah and then p- just put it there but no one has labeled it and it, it does look kind of out of place so you're like maybe but also i don't know and he just tells this story of like you know it, 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 you're not supposed to say this but it's like oh that costs like seven million dollars or some shit and yeah. i'm like i don't i don't know if anyone would really i don't think that really translates <laughs> <laughs> you might be going off of other artifacts from that era or something could be worth that. I don't think just a railing that has been built into a museum now would <laughs> would go for seven million. And and before we completely drop this topic, just in case it's not it's not resonating with it with the audience before before we what? leave it behind. This is it's an episode on culture, okay? <laughs> I don't. Th- I don't think we're uh, we're in the wrong here. Come on. There were six. There were like six pillars, and he said that each one of them cost like two million. Oh, that's right. He was even more specific. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Because it was the pillars, yeah, right? It, was it wasn't the pillars. A, it wasn't the balcony. That's no, right. Because no. there was like the balcony. Yeah. So there's four pillars. Yeah, and each of them were like two million dollars. Yeah, and then allegedly. So so I I bring up this whole thing because I'm I'm even going to the Whitney on Friday. Oh, uh, cool. Trying to like really get that culture vibe in. You know what I'm talking about? Get that, get that, you know, all that good yeah. uh, reading juices, all that stuff that come out museums, you know, all that okay. like. See, now this I like. Let's keep talking about art, but, <laughs> but let's do it that way. You know, all that rich, sophisticated feeling you get in your brains. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Fancy ass pillars. So, so basically, when uh, there's a, there's a museum of, uh, I think it's, contemporary i i'm I'm trying to Mm. remember what it is there's there's just this museum i'll look it up right now this is from my hometown as well where it's like very small from your whole town okay let me see there was also a museum we went to in uh philadelphia while he's looking that up uh in philadelphia that was very nice that what was it the the what institute I can't remember the guy's name. Barnes, the Barnes Barnes Foundation, mm-hmm. the yeah, Barnes Barnes Foundation, the Barnes Foundation, uh, which was great. Had a great collection. That one was frustrating that nothing was labeled. <laughs> yeah, because that and was just a guy's you, house. It was a yeah. It was, well, it was yeah his private collection. So he it was set up how it was always set up. Very cool museum. Very worth going to. But they have this thing where you can scan the art to find out things about it. Um, which we didn't really get to do because by the time I got there, Josh's phone was about dead <laughs> and it was draining mine quickly. And we were going to have to Uber to a show that night. <laughs> so so we couldn't really uh, uh, really get some good learning in, but we looked at everything. We looked, we looked the hell out of it. This does bother me that... <laughs> so my hometown's museum is the Alexandria Museum of Art and their mm-hmm. website is 
this is chaos. Their website is themuseum.org. Whoa, they got it early, huh? They got it so early. <laughs> and I can't the imagine muse- it's full of... The museum. I can't imagine it's full of stuff. God, it'd be great if you went there and it was like a still under construction, like clip art <laughs> from, from like 2001. Because let's see. I mean, there there can't be much in here because the price for adults is $5. Which is yeah, accessible. Ar- I appreciate that, but that's good. Hell, with the art museum, I think we have in our town. I think is free. I think it's a give what you want situation. Anyway, um, so what we have? Why is the font like this? They, I don't know. Anyway, I can't see what you're looking at. <laughs> I, I was trying to navigate what's there right now to see if this okay. was a, a a piece that's always been there. Anyway. Um, there's a story that I heard about a kid on a field trip from a, uh, a a middle school Mm -hmm. that (laughs) tripped and this happens in some museums. Like I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about the other one in a minute, but he apparently tripped and his head went like into a painting. So it like, it fully, like he fully tore it with his forehead and that that's where you're really glad you you aren't in the most cultured of cities because if that had happened in <laughs> philly it'd be yeah. your family paying that off for the rest of all of your lives yeah the you all work there now that it was in alexandria means that like i i y'all owe us, someone's got a copy yeah yeah <laughs> y'all owe us one more printout <laughs> Well, didn't your mom almost destroy a Picasso? I know we talked about it on the show, but wasn't that what yeah, it yeah. almost was? Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> but that one that one was on like an easel in a in a gallery yeah, for sale. It's true. like, why is this not protected? This is... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even a Picasso, too, that's more contemporary. That's not going to be the same as like a Da Vinci. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> those, are, those are different levels. And then... Of, of your life being ruined. Did you see the kid? I can't remember if, where this happened. But there was a kid who tripped. First of all, he already had a soda in his hand. So it's like already whoever's supposed to be watching him needs to say, be in a in museum. Jail. You're not allowed to I, you're not allowed to go near the art with drinks. Yeah. I didn't think. So he already has a soda in one hand and then he slips, but slips like off of nothing. Like slips in the way that only a, like a 14 a year old's legs can slip. You know, like when you're like a teenager, your early teens and your body is just dumb. Mm-hmm. Like it's just so yeah, yeah, yeah. stupid. Like somehow it can't figure out gravity. It just it made me mad. <laughs> For me, it wasn't quite when I was a teenager. <laughs> I was a little younger than that. I don't know, but this kid was like thirteen, fourteen. That's why I, I say it. But okay. but basically, he slips. Not even walking. This is what's so crazy. Like like you'll just see teenagers sometimes, especially when I did community theater, like lighting for community theater. And so you mm-hmm. have to be around the kids who are in the. Uh, program who have parts in the play and some of them will just fall from standing up oh yeah no my my nephew is 12 and he will he'll his ass will just fall right over yeah so this kid slips and goes to catch himself against the wall against that wall is a painting that he puts his hand through oh good i think if and then and then and then throws the soda and it gets everything else in the room yeah i mean well the the soda actually didn't leave his hand the soda was the thing he was most responsible See, with it was his own limbs a, that were the problem i thought for sure the soda was going to be the problem but he had control of the soda they say kid destroys painting 1.5 million <laughs> oh no what did he destroy uh Let's see what it is. Was this in Alexandria or where did you say this was? I I didn't say where this one was. I think this was in Taiwan. Oh, okay. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it was a flower oil on canvas that was 350 years old. (laughs) Jeez. Huh. Like if I worked at a museum and I saw a clumsy kid coming, I would just be like, we're going to give you the virtual tour. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, like yeah. honestly, you if you're gonna walk into a museum or like if you're gonna be, you should have to do I'm, a straight I'm line. Hold you, I, I'm gonna hold you in control. Yeah, <laughs> I'll point you at stuff, but uh, from now you you don't get to use motor functions in this room. Mm-hmm. Um, but since we're talking about destroyed art, can we just take a quick second to remember how glorious it was when that lady fucked up that painting of Jesus? <laughs> Yeah, see, it just it wasn't just it's delightful to remember. <laughs> so for those that don't know, that was a restorer, right? She, yeah, yeah, she was okay. supposed so, to be a restorer. So for those that don't know, when you are going to a museum, especially if it's a museum with like truly priceless works from like antiquity, you right. will usually see some restoration. And if you've got a real eye for it, you can pick out what's been restored and what hasn't. Mm-hmm. Most things from like BC should be very faded. If they're not faded, then there's been right. some heavy, heavy restoration in them. And there's even some like, you know, not not to put them on blast or anything because I really enjoyed it and I'm going to go back so I can, I'm just going to keep going mm-hmm. back to the Met as often as I can until I know my way around and can finish, like feel yeah. like I've finished looking at certain exhibits. But mm-hmm. in the Greek so you were on the Egyptian side. On the other side of that, of the museum on the first floor, is the yeah. uh, Greek and Roman sections. And mm-hmm. in those sections, there are a couple of Greek pots that look like downright cartoonish in the way oh, they've yeah, been yeah. restored. Like some of them look good and some of them they've, they've, they've traced well, but you can tell where it was just so faded that they couldn't trace that they just made up a face. Because <laughs> there was one that okay, so and this will this will only work if you see the video of the podcast, which is on YouTube, by the way. Um, hey. So there was one of them where it's a pot that has aspects of the Trojan War in it. So you see Ajax, you see Achilles, you see all these people, and then there's a random person, which maybe this person had no historical significance or no significance to the Iliad, so maybe it was just supposed to be an extra soldier, but it's like Achilles looking fierce, it's Ajax looking like, Ajax looking like inquisitive, it's like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if they were in battle with Hector or not, but then there's just this one character off to the side that's getting stabbed, and the face they're making is just like, <laughs> <laughs> like the eyes are like too wide. The eyes are like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It was it was insanely cartoonish, and the ink looked wet, like <laughs> like it looked like they just did that. Hey, do you have that restoration done? We're about to open. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it was yeah. it was too much. Yeah, because like, like most restoration is like you know cleaning and stuff, kind of trying to just spruce it up. But that Jesus, I mean, like that, was, that Jesus pangling, she was just like, she like, let me just freehand it. <laughs> let me go. Wait, let wait, me go wait, ahead and just wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let me find it. Let me find it <laughs> and then put it put it in the show notes. We need to put like a a link to oh, it absolutely. in the show notes so people can. <laughs> Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it like on Spotify. It shows the different like episode pictures. <laughs> I can just make it the. Je- can I tell you that when you type in Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking top eight results is painting restoration. <laughs> it was it was beautiful. Okay, all right. So that's a piece of art that I want to buy. Like that's an interesting thing. Like. I'm not really a religious arts guy, but I would hang that on my wall in a second. <laughs> okay. I love how the like one of the first results in it when you look it up on YouTube is um bungled <laughs> bungled restoration attempt destroys painting. <laughs> and it's just I'm assuming either either someone who's upset or the restorer next to the painting like being interviewed. But just so you know. So you can follow along if you've clicked in the in the show notes or in the description of click, the YouTube video. Click what? No, the, oh, w- a, video? a link. A link. Oh, I was just gonna, I was just going to put a picture of it somewhere. Okay, you yeah, have to send me this link then. Yeah, but if you, th- this is all neither here nor there. But basically, for them to see it, they'd have to click something in the bio of the episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I think you we're can, saying the you same can thing. Do, no, I, I was. I didn't know you were sending a, a to a link to a video. I was just going to post the picture. Oh yeah, I'm not sending you, a link to a video. I'm just saying w- early in the results on Google is when you go to Google Images, there's a video that's just like <laughs> bungled restoration attempt. Yeah, um, I, it's funny too that they then just showed the world. I, I don't know. At, at that point, if she would have showed up with that <laughs> that, that restoration, I'd been like, oh, oops, looks like we lost this one. Okay, <laughs> so. There's been a heist for people for people looking at it right now. And for those of you who are yet to look at it, the initial one, you can tell it needs some restoration because there are whole pieces of the paint that have chipped off. And there's a lot of white in the in the overall painting that is just like indicative of Mm -hmm. aging. But now this is the original picture, not the messed this, up. One. This is the original picture. The original picture. The original where picture it looks like the subject it's supposed to look. And like. Jesus's head is tilted. You see the crown of thorns on his head, and it does look a little bit, whether from aging or from the original painting, it does mm-hmm. look a bit like Jesus has been punched in the eye. All right, like yeah. that. That is, he's he's really giving his good side hard. Right, and it's a bit thick. It's a bit fat. He's, he's trying to look his best, but he's wearing the crown of thorns. Means he's he's having a no good, very bad day. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus Christ, no good, very bad day. <laughs> this is not the day to get a selfie. You know, like yeah, this is yeah. But he's but he's trying. He's trying he to give busy. his good side. All right. He's tur- he's turning the other cheek because that's the one they have not punched yet. So okay. he's trying to just get a good picture of it. The restoration mm-hmm. can only be described to me as uh, Elmo in blackface. <laughs> 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 but the blackface is actually pretty tad. Like it's just like this looks. This is I, I gotta bring it up. The, now. the art is so bad that it looks a little racist. Like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's it's got a Muppet vibe to it. There's a definite Muppet. I love it. The story's like what five years old. Too. Yeah, yeah. It just popped back in my head. It's so delightful. Because also, no, 2014? they fully oh, smeared wow. the mouth. So the mouth is so oh, smeared yeah, yeah. now that it looks like Jesus doesn't have a mouth. They moved the beard to way under the chin. So the beard that Jesus did have is no longer in the right place. And yeah, no, the he... nose has been reconstructed to give like a, a what is it, a Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> Reconstruct is a very nice word for for what they've done here. They, it, what his an eyes attack. are black too. Look at his eyes, and also, and they made like the pupils white. Whoever did this is an atheist. Like who I was gonna <laughs> say they they're either drunk or we're trying to make a statement. Yeah, or both. The only way this could be more disrespectful is if they wrote on the actual painting, "Is this your king?" Like. <laughs> You know, maybe it's it's you know it's trying to be it's trying to put you in the moment. It's trying to actually take you back then, because like you know they didn't have glasses back then. So this is this painting is from the point of view of someone who can't see shit, and Jesus was right there, and they didn't know it. Not a lot of people do, you know, perspective. We don't think about that a lot in religious art, you know. Like. This person botched this painting and then went on to be a, and when I say mild, I mean the low side of mild. Like if we're talking to Taco Bell sauces levels of success, the extra mm-hmm. mild, mild, right? Right. And I'm I'm sending you a picture right now where just someone did a goof of where it was restored to look like it's Pat from SNL. <laughs> it just made me laugh. That is funny. That's pretty good, right? I know these are all visual bits, but it, uh, uh, wow, that one entertained me. Uh, well, that's yeah, that's uh, I think that's the culture segment. 
We should actually call this episode, like in parentheses or in brackets, the episode should say visual companion. <laughs> <laughs> and then just well, have a link to everything we've talked about so people don't get lost. Yeah. No, I'll make I'll make a little we'll we'll have some things for people to look at. Uh but yeah. No, this is the uh this is the, the JJS audio tour is what this is. <laughs> All right, all right. One more. I would love to do. I would love for us to to record a tour for a museum. <laughs> <laughs> That's an episode we maybe we should do. Just an episode. Man's do look like Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, because we do. Because Josh and I, I would say we do a fifty fifty. When we, every time we go to a museum, is us really discussing art we like and techniques we like, and then the <laughs> other half is us just roasting the hell out of art and how people look in art. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm sending this to you right now, and we'll just add this one to the list. This is another botched restoration. It's the botched Virgin Mary painting. I I did see that one right underneath. Um, If if just to describe it for Uh, those of you, she looks like a thumb with eyes. Yeah, yeah. They they gave her the full like (laughs) armagur. Irma Kurt the Virgin Murray. (laughs) 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 (sighs) Like, I don't like you can't get work again if you do that, right? Let me tell you, I can't draw, all right. But I at least have the integrity to not take a job where it is yeah. my duty to redraw a master. Yeah, they. Yeah, because it looks like they asked me. It looks like they asked me, "Hey, can you restore this picture of Jesus?" And we need it done today. That's what you're gonna get. <laughs> also, How, who, I'm very sorry. Died? We don't have any more oil. You're gonna have to use crayons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're all they're pretty filed down already so good luck yeah can i tell you ooh someone send us some art that will restore <laughs> so when i tell tell me if you experienced anything like this i'm trying to okay. remember where this was but when i was little there was a uh, a kid who had the full box set of the is it 128 i think it's 128 crayons with different colors with a pencil sharpener okay. in the back Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Oh, absolutely. Okay, we had we had one of those. Yeah, this kid was styling on everybody early in the year. Yeah, and by by like the spring, maybe right before summer started, he had whittled down every crayon more than I can even like. I can't. I can't. I honestly every crayon, dude. Every crayon, because I think what he was doing. Dang was he just did not like any this is this is was his flex every time he popped that that box of crayons open they were mm-hmm. all sharp they were all like fully you know like pinpoint good. sharp ready to go gotcha fine gotcha. point crayon coloring okay okay and and to to his credit he was actually like a pretty good at drawing like i remember <laughs> I remember looking at his drawings and being like, oh, yeah, I can't do that. Like, I was going to say, if, if all of his crayons are filed down and then he's shit at drawing, then you've got like, he's eating those. Yeah. He's he's sucking on those crayons. And so, <laughs> That's why they're so low. And so then this kid, this is wild. Okay. So then this kid is has filed them down so much that they can't really, like he lost one in the sharpener because it got too short to sharpen so then he was just turning it with his thumb to try to like turn it and sharpen it but then it just got stuck there's no way to get it out now yeah i was waiting to see if then like just cut his finger open or something no no they they made it so you couldn't do that listen this is a josh johnson story i'm not sure (laughs) where the turn's coming but i get ready (laughs) and and so this kid had um had got to the point where all of his crayons he finally had to take the paper off of each crayon because it was like mm-hmm. they're whittled yep. down that much. 
And he, by the end of that box of crayons, he just had a box of beads. Like he would, Man, but he was literally rolling the, the crayon against the paper <laughs> to get the color off and to, to color. And I had mm -hmm. never, like, this kid was such a genius to me. It had never occurred to me that that could even happen. Yeah. Like, he was, like, fully I mean, just dragging the little beads of crayon across the paper. And then yeah. was, like, doing low-key, like, six-year-old masterpieces. Like, I, That sounds like he got the most out of that pack more than anyone else. Yeah. Because he had all those crayons and that sharpener and... Listen, all of us who had it, usually it's like, it's cool to bust out, and then you lose crayons, and then, yeah, you get something stuck in the sharpener, and then you just kind of have like a, you know, a loose pencil case of crayons because you're done with the box. This kid, though, sounds like he took care of that box, <laughs> really used these crayons, yeah, and used them well. Do you remember the, like, what was it, what was the company that made the the really hardcore, like, like a uh, number two pencil color pencils. I mean, I think there's a bunch of them, but I'm it not may sure. have still been Crayola. I have no idea, but basically, they make some. Yeah, number two pencils. There was a there was a kid who went to <laughs> he went to steal another kid's colored pencils, um, mm -hmm. and this was like you know obviously we're talking like playground rules. This is a no go, right? This yeah. is like yeah. off jump. All right, you're get you're getting yeah. touched up. If you touch my colored pencils, much yeah. less try to steal the whole pack. You you can ask, can I borrow that colored pencil? But you have to be prepared for the answer to be no. Yeah. I need that one. And so this kid swiped all the colored pencils off this kid's desk and started running, right? Damn. That's like in middle school terms, that's like having sex with someone's wife. <laughs> As, <laughs> you've you've created a situation here and so so then you know kid takes off after the other kid and we're already not the most coordinated because we're all young mm -hmm. but in a in a sometimes something happens where it pulls almost like a divine instinct out of you that you didn't know you had and mm -hmm. <laughs> this kid because he can't catch up to the kid that stole his colored pencils he gets just close enough to him that he makes a big bet and he just fully swipes one leg. Like, just, like, catches up to him enough Ooh. to trip him. Swipes yeah. one leg. The kid who's got, like, the colored pencils... <laughs> I'm trying to remember how he was holding them. Had the colored pencils. <laughs> like, either... I can't remember if they were against his chest or all in his hands. But either way, he's holding them kind of like this. And he trips and lands uh, on like all Like this, of them. he means he means has them like in his hands over his chest yeah, for the yeah. listeners. Falls on them and double staked his chest. <laughs> Completely just <laughs> like like Ugh. like like really impales a couple pencils. See, I knew I knew someone was going to get impaled soon. That's why I felt it with the crayon story. <laughs> I felt it coming. <laughs> I felt the chaos building. <laughs> And then he rolled over. So he lands and he's like, oh, <laughs> just from landing, right? He's like, you ever, when, remember when you were a kid and you get so hurt you didn't cry? You were like, mm -hmm. you were like, mm -hmm. I need to breathe through this situation. Like, you don't even. Yeah. <laughs> you were stunned that feeling existed. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so this kid rolls over and we just see a bunch of colored pencils like in him, right? Oh God! And not like not like deep, like he's not gonna die or anything, but just like really, they stuck, <laughs> they were sharp. Oh. And so then the, me tighten he up he bit. rolls over, and the kid who was chasing him turns around. I was like, "Uh, you could keep him." <laughs> just Uh, and the and kid laying on the ground is like, I won, and puts his hands up, but all the pencils are still <laughs> sticking out of his chest. Nobody oh, wants no. your blood orange, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. All of these, the color is blood. Yeah. Now. <laughs> it's not green anymore. That's blood. <laughs> yeah. You've made this pack all one color now. <laughs> oh, man. Just to, just to keep... <laughs> Our very classy episode going. <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna tell that one. I'm gonna wait. I'm oh wait. no, come on, come on. What do you right. wait for? What? Okay. What are you saving them Just for? Just basically, <laughs> 
Did you ever see that video got passed around back in the day in like 2007 where this guy was like bucking his friend and his friend finally gets up. They're in a college dorm and his friend gets mm-hmm. up and then throws uh, some scissors at him. I don't know if I've seen this oh, Okay, one. well, he throws the scissors at him. And a lot of people thought the video was fake, but yeah. uh, he gets up, finally gets annoyed, throws the scissors at him, and the scissors go like right into the kid's arm. No. But there's no blood. They're just in there. And that's why people were like, oh, this is fake or whatever, because you see him throw him, but whenever it would have hit him was uh, was like slightly off camera. And okay. a lot of people also think it's fake because we hadn't reached that level of fake prank technology yet in 2007. Like in 2007, <laughs> if you saw some something go down online, it was probably really happening. Yeah. Like nobody yeah. was faking world star videos. <laughs> no, they were just that's a just person who showing actually up. <laughs> got knocked out. Like <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and so what? so that I mean, one I suppose if you if you throw it well enough too, that's I mean that's holding in the blood, you know? <laughs> if you have yeah, that in your so arm. It just it the <clears throat> way that it stuck him and then that guy was also like too hurt to be like screaming or upset. He just went dude dude he just kept saying dude over and over and then another guy is like hey so should we like call an ambulance or anything or like (laughs) yeah i don't know if i saw that one all right we'll we'll see if we put that one in the bio i don't don't want (laughs) to no 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 we we probably should i actually don't even know if you can find it there seems to be tell me if you if you think that this is on the money or not there seems mm. to be a different internet now than there was when we were like getting into college. I feel like the internet now is like mm. a place where nothing is ever really gone and everything is permanent, nothing is private, all that stuff. But I I could swear to you that the internet from like 2002 till like mm-hmm. 2000 maybe 7 yeah that like that period of internet was where a lot of stuff was getting shared but even to this day there's stuff i can't find anymore yeah i get what you mean um yeah because you can find some of those old videos i found but they're like either there's copies of copies like it's clearly like you know been copied several times and on just some other account i think some it's because some of those videos that we all knew were from sites that don't really exist anymore like uh, I mean, I know they still exist, but, you know, like uh, E-Bombs World and stuff like that. Remember those sites yeah. where they were always kind of pre-Facebook, like just kind of social media collections of just stuff. A pre-Reddit more is kind of what those sites were. Yeah. But then a lot of them shuttered and deleted all their stuff. So if it didn't like make it over to YouTube or something, those videos, like some of them did disappear. Yeah. Not all great art gets restored. <laughs> Honestly, the the way in which... The, the way in which we've lost games, especially, and certain oh, videos like to games? time. Like, do you remember yeah. Shockwave? That sounds familiar. So Shockwave Player is, is, I don't even know if they're affiliated, but like on old PCs that only ran Internet Explorer, the, mm-hmm. the basically their version of, mm-hmm. I guess, Adobe. Somebody can correct me in the comments or in an email if I'm wrong, but basically Shockwave was like one of the video players that you had to keep oh, yeah, yeah, restoring. Yeah. I remember Shockwave. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. Shockwave.com was this site where it was mostly games, like it was Shockwave games, but then it also mm-hmm. had like forums and stuff like that back when chat rooms were big and stuff. And yeah. Shockwave games had some of the best games. Like when I tell you Shockwave games and Cartoon Network's original site, like we're talking about even before Toonami. Yo, Cartoon the Cartoon Network, Network site had, yeah. had games. They had Dragon Ball Z games. They had yeah. Bug Juice. No, no, Disney. Sorry, sorry. Disney actually had a website that had a bunch of games on it. This is back when all the networks were, had their own website with like games based off of their shows. And the But they were like fleshed out games too. Fully though, fleshed out the thing. Like they were like they weren't just because now if you see a a you know a, a sponsored game or you know a crossover thing it's usually just like an app game and it's the same shit over and over again yeah it's like a match three whatever 
match three or a candy crush ripoff or, yeah. or something like that. It's just something that's rushed. But like they used to make fully fleshed out games. I remember the, a, a Cartoon Network game that literally took a couple hours to beat and it was like a puzzle solving where you like went to different islands and traded things to other characters and it took a while to beat it and i'm like that was a full game let's talk about a game that i never beat samurai jack <laughs> on cartoon network they had yeah. you as a young samurai jack fight everyone he had to fight to become samurai jack yeah and i was always getting uh caught up early because I'm not that great at video games. I was getting caught early on uh, on um, the African guy with the sticks. I, I don't know Samurai Jack that well. So oh, okay. I'll take Basically, your, I'll take your your word for it's, it. It's a it's a beautiful show. We should watch it sometime. I I like the guy who made it. I, yeah, I've never watched it, but he he did another show called uh, Primal. That wait, is, you've never uh, watched it. I've I've seen like parts of episodes. Ooh. No, I've never watched Samurai Jack. Okay, all right. This All right, you ready dope. for our Samurai Jack yeah. <laughs> watch podcast? Yeah. I I feel like Samurai Josh. Also for for the listener, for and this is this is completely serious because I think that this could be a, a cool thing. For the listener, mm. please write in and let us know what you think or how you would feel about any sort of companion content. Like if we if we did do like a visual, you know, like uh audio companion to a bunch of images or like something like that because that could be a good fun new thing that we try i don't i don't fully know what he means so yeah i guess let us like like imagine okay so for instance right yeah you you could do um the entire like uh the entire image collection of Mm -hmm. an artist's work or something you know what I mean? Yeah. So then uh-huh. in the show notes where just this image is like, you know, time stamped like this. We talk about this one first, this one second, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I think that there could be something fun about like, let's say we were to watch Rise of the Young Wolf. What's, is that a Samurai Jack episode? Ouch. I, what is that? That is the air hockey documentary that we watched together. I forgot about that, yeah. I mean, I think what you're describing is a reaction video. Kind of like a reaction video, but yeah, in pieces. I think that's what you, yeah, I think it's what you're describing is just a, 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 a more well edited kind of reaction video. Mm-hmm. But we could always we just we could release just a commentary for it, the special <laughs> commentary would go watch Rise of the Young Wolf. <laughs> and here's our commentary track for it. Oh no! <laughs> I like that. W- oh, there's a fly. Yeah, this one's all over the place. Because first it was art, then flash games, then I think we just had a work meeting for a second. There. <laughs> no, that's my bad. Well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know if it would, if it would uh, translate into something worth asking people. But ending the whole thought on reaction video means probably not. <laughs> Let's do a reaction video right now. <gasps> that was a little joke. That was a little joke I did. <laughs> that one was scared. That one was scared is what that was. Yeah. Well, what were we building to with Cartoon Network and Disney Channel websites? Was it oh, oh I, just off of the how the internet's changed? Yeah, how the internet's changed and how I can't find those games. Like, now that I have the motor skills to beat games... <laughs> I really yeah. wish I could go back and just do what my young, inexperienced hands could not. Right. I feel yeah. like I got good at video games when I was like 22. Like I finally started putting it all together. Right. Because I yeah. was decent at some games, but I just didn't have the the concentration and the hand eye coordination for certain games. And then, mm-hmm. sure enough, at like. Like right around like twenty three, I'd be chilling with Jacob, and we play something, and I'd be like, "Oh, it's all clicking somehow now." You know, but that's deceiving though, because I feel like I've had it both ways with old games, where you go back and then you can just beat it. Actually, and I'm kind of like, "Oh, this is the game I had so much trouble with." But then there are still some old games, and I'm like, "This is stupid hard." Yeah, it's still really hard. That's how I feel and- about Tapper. When when I watch you play Tapper. 
Yeah. We arcade games. Arcade games though were designed to be hard because they wanted to just keep putting coins in. So certain arcade games get to a point where you truly just can't win, but they want you. They just want you to keep feeding money. Mm-hmm. It's to make you feel good enough. But uh, I'm pretty good at Tapper too. Just putting that out there. Just wanted. Just wanted to read. Just wanted to end on the important point, <laughs> which is that I'm pretty good at Tapper. <laughs> that's just a fun. That's a fun one to play because it's got a different controller system what are we doing now mm. <laughs> this is our most tangenty one but i think it's because we this is the most less pressed for time we've been in a while yeah yeah <laughs> to fit an episode in yeah this, this is what happens when we actually have all day to chat <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh one, anything else on art, or should I get the mailbag? Um, so yeah, you can pick the mailbag while I talk about art museums a little bit more because I've now been to enough. Do it. So okay, I've I've been to enough now that I have gathered lots of different experiences, and I remember, wow, there was this one woman named Leanne who I. I can't think of a better word than cornered. Uh, (laughs) She she truly and fundamentally cornered me (laughs) in in the abstract abstract expression section of the museum and was just telling me about her day. See, but now this kind of sounds like uh, a Josh Johnson dream come true, though. You would think so, but her not only was her day not good, she it, it like I'm all about getting to know people, it, you know, in like an organic way or anything. I think it's a different energy when you know no one wants to hear what you're about to say, and so you quarter a person and tell them because. I was like, oh, okay, you know, like she was telling me about how she had to go to court and like all this stuff. And I was like, oh, oh no, well, I hope that, I hope that works out. And, um, you know, best of luck in your claim. Uh, I, I, in my head, I'm like, I got nothing for you. Like, I, I don't, I don't fully understand. Cause she was also <laughs> trying to explain. Good luck with your claim. <laughs> well, she was trying to explain to me what she was trying to sue for. And I, no, I get, and that. I also didn't get it. So I was like, oh, yeah, I, I guess. But this isn't a checking in with a person to get advice. It's also not a time where you're like, I, can, I need to air this out to a person for feedback. This is just like, oh, man, all right, this guy's by himself. And, yeah. <laughs> and so then, <laughs> which I really respect this about her because this is where it becomes your nightmare. So I'm like, oh, well, you know, I hope that everything goes well. And, uh, you know, I even think I said it was great talking to you. And I start to move. um, And she just follows me. Like, she just follows me and keeps talking. And I didn't think it was an option. Like, I didn't think... (laughs) You thought surely she won't come with me. I, because usually when there's someone that's the security of the museum that's like, oh, don't touch the painting or whatever, they're usually confined to an area. Right, yeah. But she is leaving her post. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Or like that guy at the Barnes Foundation, remember, who's like running laps? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Some some security guards are free range. That guy, <laughs> that guy, so clearly wanted someone to be arrestable. Like he was just, <laughs> yeah, he was just walking in circles, getting his steps. Yeah, in, man. and some of it was. And it's like, not a big place. It's not a big place, and some of it was like we would see him in a different room, going in the direction he was just in. Like, does he know where he's going? Like it's it seemed like yeah. he was lost, and he didn't want to admit it to anyone. It, it, it seemed like it was going to be very easy for him to knock someone over into like all of the antique furniture that was there. Yeah, imagine your whole head going through a Matisse because the security guard is like <laughs> trying to find the bathroom and simply can't, <laughs> but doesn't want to ask someone who doesn't work there where the bathroom is. Yeah. 
yeah. It's his first day. He's nervous, he's trying to walk off the nerves. Yeah, but no. So, how long did this security guard at this other museum follow you? I just, I, I truly. <laughs> We're still dating. <laughs> I, I truly can't even imagine the amount of time that it was. It felt like for half the time I was there, and I was there oh, for no. like four hours. See, that's what you get. Yeah. See, that's why I, sometimes I'm kind of like, maybe I need to be more open to experiences like Josh. And then I'm kind of like, mm. yeah, I, it's nice that people don't really talk to and me. And some of it, I will say, some of it did seem unfair to her. There were a couple of instances where I was like, yeah, you should probably, like now I am rooting for you in your suit, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also like her back, it was like, <laughs> it was just... Her- she was yeah. She, her back? She, yeah, she was just talking about how her back always hurts, but then they oh, they okay. give her the upstairs, uh, and she's like, "I really want the downstairs, so I don't have to go up the stairs for my back." But you know, to be fair, I only have to go up the stairs one uh, twice in my shift, and I was just like, "Man, this like she was complaining to me so much, it felt like family." Yeah. Yeah, because that's if you're gonna follow someone around at your job to talk to them, like bring something, man. Yeah. Make up some stuff. Make up how old those pillars are. Do something. <laughs> Don't just be like oh, a little bit of a little bit of creak, a little bit of ache in my, my back there. And, yeah, but I have to use it, you know, yeah. walking and standing. And she would just she'd be like, "Oh, I like this one." That was the other thing that she did that cracked me up. She'd be like, "I really like this one." I'm like, "Oh yeah, it's it's pretty cool." Like as if I'm not seeing everything for the first time, right? <laughs> And then <laughs> she was like, we're not supposed to, um, we're not supposed to comment on what we like and don't like, uh, unless you ask, unless you ask us. So ask me which one I don't like. <laughs> and I was like, what? And she was like, ask me which one I don't like. And I was like, you know, it's just us in here. Like, this is like, this is like a slow day. That's I have like great a club, mom energy I have like a there. club That's date a... on the Thursday. And so I'm just there during a Thursday. So there's almost no one in the entire museum. And yeah, she's like, ask me which one. Great. I was like, are we on camera or something? She's like, just ask me which one I don't like. And I was like, fine, which one do you not like? And she was like, that one. And she pointed <laughs> to the one behind me. And she was like, it looks like, <laughs> she leaned in to say, it looks like poo. <laughs> <laughs> got him you got him doris yeah yeah get them. get him <laughs> ask me which one i don't like uh i like that uh well should we wrap up this this very uh culture filled episode with with our mailbag i mean not only should we wrap it up we should probably cut 15 minutes of it <laughs> Eh, we'll see. Uh, for the video portion, my camera is no longer recording for some reason. I guess the card's full, even though it was empty. I don't know. Uh, so just for the remainder of the video, my half uh, will just have that Jesus painting. <laughs> I'll just go ahead. So you'll see Josh and then that terribly restored. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be great. It'll just be you looking at it too, be like, uh-huh. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's open up the mailbag. Uh, we may only have time for this one because I have a feeling we might be able to dig into it a little bit. Uh, but this is from, well, they've signed it anonymous, so I will leave it anonymous. Um, but the title is VeggieTales Sex Talk. So just absorb that title for a second. Uh, what's up, JLo? I want to start off and say I appreciate the elements both of you bring to the show. You guys remind me of my younger sister and I. Uh, I should have been I should have been kidnapped by now, and my sister is the Logan that humbles me. <laughs> okay, there we go. I think it's a good definition of our roles. Uh, we all grow up with preconceived connotations. As someone who mainly grew up in Minnesota, I was always taught to shudder and dramatically act disgusted when someone says Iowa. Then I went to college in Nebraska, which culturally uh, we do the same thing, but also comment on how bad their corn is. It makes me laugh when Logan rips on his state, too, because it makes me think, who actually likes Iowa? Real quick, 
I know I'm from Iowa. It's my home. And yeah, I, I rip it a little bit. But, um, you know, Minnesota, Nebraska can go eat a fat one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nebraska is the more boring Iowa. And that's that's saying something. Anyway, uh, I'm <laughs> just getting into some Midwest rivalries. <laughs> hey, they brought it up. Okay. Uh, I have two young kids. And as someone who likes to stress about things very far in the future, I was hoping you guys could help me prepare for the question. I married into a very religious family. My oldest was born a year and a half before our wedding and conceived within seven months of our relationship. I feel like that's an unnecessary information for this question. But what is the most watered down veggie tail friendly answer you can think of so i believe this is the sex talk this one it, it wants it to be so clean they didn't even really say sex <laughs> just the talk it would it would actually be so or is it the talk about being born out of wedlock is that the talk i i can't fully tell but it's very fitting that you're now that poorly drawn jesus as you ask me all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize that was going <laughs> to thematically line up so well. Okay, so is is that, do you think that's the talk? Maybe, about, yeah. yeah. Was being born before, because sees seven months, seven months into our relationship? Yeah, I, I guess so. If if you don't know, I don't know. Um, that's that's the information I have. If, when I first read it, I, I thought it was just like the sex wait, talk. But now I'm wondering, again? is it about that? Let me just read this again. I have two young kids, and as someone who likes to stress about things very far in the future, I was hoping you guys could help me prepare for the question. I married into a very religious family. My oldest was born a year and a half before our wedding and conceived within seven months of our relationship. What is the most watered-down, VeggieTale-friendly answer you can think of? So the question is not posed. The question is implied. But then the the follow-up information makes me think it's a different question okay so i'm just gonna answer it as if it's the talk uh so the sex talk yeah so okay when a cucumber seven months after a mommy and daddy meet <laughs> yeah sorry go ahead do yours yeah when when a cucumber and a tomato are very much in love they decide to make a salad and what what's a salad without some seeds? Oh. <laughs> I don't I I I don't know. So then, what's a salad without some seeds? So then, remember, you're saying this to a painting of Jesus. So then, you have to plant the seed to get the fruits and vegetables to grow. So that you can have new veggies for your salad. Hmm. I feel like that's pretty good because even Veggie Tales doesn't cover it. Like I'm, but I'm it, wading into waters that right. have been unchartered by even no, Veggie no, Tales. That's true, but and here's why I think the Veggie Tales angle is what causes a problem here because what has happened to those veggies to make a salad is that they were all brutally murdered. <laughs> <sighs> you know, you got to chop them up. So that's sending a mixed signal already. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now we've just created a confusing uh, <laughs> bedtime story to scare children. You know what? Yeah, that's my bad. No, 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 no. I, th- I, th- I think that was a good. No, actually, honestly, I've never heard the salad metaphor. <laughs> and I think it actually kind of works. <laughs> seeds got a double connotation that i <laughs> that i don't love but <laughs> sometimes you just want some seed um no i like that i like that that's better that's better than honestly that's better than most sex talks i think what you just did because there was no there was no bim bims and woo woos and whatever else yeah. that people try to use yeah. to replace body parts. I think you actually did. I thought we were going to need to to really work this out. I think you nailed it in one. That's very kind. <laughs> what the 
<laughs> what was that? Was that a fly? No, it was a mosquito in here. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> oh, your body language got so weird there. <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for listening to the Josh Johnson Show. We had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, Josh Johnson on Twitter, Josh J Comedy on Facebook, and Josh Johnson Comedy on TikTok and YouTube, where we post clips of the show. And if you're looking for Logan, you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. And if you want to get into the mailbag to uh, ask us perplexing questions, ve- vegetable-themed questions, uh, you can email us, joshjohnsonshow at gmail.com. And if you want some uh, of our bonus art, I'll call it, uh, go on over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Josh Johnson show where we have bonus podcasts and some video stuff and access to live shows and old live show replays. And speaking of live shows, Josh and I will be performing together next week in Phoenix, Arizona, September 15th and 16th. Uh, so if you look down in the episode bio, you'll see tickets there or a ticket link there along with the links to whatever uh, confusing visual aids we are also <laughs> putting with this episode. This is this is this is new territory for us. This is untreaded water for us. Yeah, and we we hope you like I it. Like it, or uncharted water, untreaded. You don't tread water. I guess can you? Yeah, but you shouldn't be. <laughs> yes, but it's frowned upon. Yeah, charter the water. Charter it. It's probably smarter to charter it.